Are you looking to get better fast? You want to kind of move around the slow, arduous journey of just going really, really slow to, to improve your skills uh, at art? Well, I'm going to give you some tips here that are going to really help you jump forward exponentially. So it's things that I applied when I first went to art school, and we'll get into that. So let's go. Okay, so you want to get better at art, right? You want to get better fast. No one wants to take uh, 10, 20, 30 years to get better at something, right? Uh, I know uh, because of the recent book that came out, everyone's obsessed with, uh, what is it, 10,000 hours or something like that. Um, I'm not opposed to the thinking of that book, but what I will tell you is this, I don't subscribe to that wholeheartedly so let me kind of get into it okay so number one thing okay um a little bit about my background i was a collegiate athlete before i went to art school okay so when i went to art school i went into it where i was not at the same level as my classmates it, i just wasn't uh the majority of my time was spent on sports right training for sports uh, i like to draw obviously that's why i went to art school but there there was a big gap and so what i did is i decided to take my 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 training regimen that i use um, as an athlete and apply it to arts so it's something simple as this right so number one example um, if you see someone in a gym right and they've been training for years and years and years. But you notice like their body never changes. They look the same. Uh, nothing ever happens, right? Um, the reason this happens is you have to be very specific with what you do when you train, okay? So what does that mean? If I'm a marathon runner, I would train specifically in a different way to be a marathon runner than a sprinter. Everything about it is different, okay? There's an uh, acronym for it. It's called SED, Specific Adaptation to Implied Demands. So what that means is whatever I get specific on and I train for that specific task, your body will adapt to that. Right. Um, also, just, you know, I'm a certified strength conditioning coach and I've worked with athletes. So that's why some of this is all going to come into play here, what I'm talking about. So, for example, when I went to art school, um, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to become a really high polished illustrator at the time. And it, I wanted to do it traditionally. Um, it was before, well, digital was just coming on. But I knew I couldn't do many of the skills that were required. So how I did it was... Number one, I broke everything down into specifics, and I only focused on that for about a month to two months. So an example would be this. Um, I wanted to learn composition. I thought that was really, really crucial for making really powerful images. Um, okay, everyone can draw and everyone can render, but no one can really make pictures. So what I did is I spent about two months, and I journaled, and I did sketchbooks, and I just studied. All I did was study composition. I studied all of um, classical uh, paintings throughout art history. I looked at all the contemporary people that I thought were really, really important as well. Um, and I just studied it and studied it. And I would do little mini thumbnails of it. And then I would also write and journal specific things that I saw um, just so that I could really get a really good grasp on it where it just became second nature. Okay. Once I really got good at that, where I really felt really confident, that's when I said, okay, done with that. Let's move on to the next thing. Next thing was color. Okay. All I focused on was color. I looked at everyone's color compositions. Again, I looked at it from a scientific standpoint. I looked at it from just, you know, uh, go, go with the flow. Then I looked at all of my favorite artists and then again i went through art history and i started seeing patterns and so when i start seeing these patterns it was like oh i see what everyone's doing this is basically a variation of the same thing over and over and over again but they're just doing little minor tweaks to make it feel different but people are doing the same thing part of it was because of the mediums of the time period 
part of it if you were commercially there are certain things that you need to create vibrancy so you're going to fall back on the same uh, uh, I don't want to call it um, a crutch but you fall back on certain patterns because you know that's what sells and that's why people do it okay so then that was that once I understood color really well then I went back to drawing right um, and this is where I want to kind of explain where how this really comes into play um, there's two different types of drawing I wanted to learn how to do high polished work so I spent my time drawing in a way that would allow me to get really high resolve finishes but when I was at school at this time you know a lot of my classmates were going on to work at Disney DreamWorks had just started when I was in school so a lot of people were leaving just as I was graduating to go to DreamWorks so we had a very heavy uh, kind of drawing program that was specific towards animation style but that wasn't my goal at that time right at that time I wanted to do something else so the quicker more fast quick study style is great for animation and you need to go that route right and that's how you have to train for animation so what I had to do is I had to do longer more sustained work on the side for myself to get the skills that I needed for um, doing the you know high polish rendering stuff right now at that time too you know I had I would have instructors sometimes say you can't draw you can render but you can't draw and I understood what they're trying to say. It was sort of a rude way of saying it. It was saying that, you know, you're you're falling back on your ability to, your ability to just render, just look at something and spend hours on it. And so it was kind of, a, it was a slight, and I understood that it was a slight, but I didn't take it personal. Um, I knew that I could draw as well, but it wasn't my focus. Now, later on, I did go back and spend more time on doing like the real quick studies because I wanted to use that as a way to bring more energy and vitality into my work but I didn't try to do them both at the same time because they're two different things right the high rendering you know catching every little nuance in, in the face the pores the subtlety of the anatomy and things like that you can't do that in five minutes ten minutes twenty minutes or forty minutes you just you're not gonna learn that in those short uh oppose that time period you're just not going to learn it but doing those long poses like that you would never learn energy and gesture and and the the energy that's required for some dynamic illustrations um but again i did them in sections i didn't try to do them all as one and for me even to this day if i take a class with someone or i do something even though i'm a teacher i still take classes Anytime someone tries to make me put it all in one box at one time and, and learn it that way, I just completely ignore them, to be honest with you, and I break it down in sections so it's easier. I can learn it faster that way, right? Um, so we talked about drawing, we talked about color, we talked about composition, perspective, same thing. I don't want to be focused on painting. I don't want to be focused on color. I don't want to be focused on anything. I just want to learn the fundamentals of perspective. Truly understand it. Why put my pressure on myself, right? Me, right? Why would I put pressure on myself to do this beautiful illustration, concept art, children's book, whatever it is you want to do, it's going to be the best thing ever as I'm trying to learn perspective. Oh yeah, and I'm still trying to learn how to paint. Oh yeah, and I'm still trying to learn how to do composition. Oh yeah, and how well do you think the perspective is going to look? It's probably not going to look that great, to be honest with you. It might, but I doubt it. I mean, you know, how what happens is in every situation, if you go to school, there's always going to be about 2 or 3% of the students who get everything very easily, pretty quickly. They still work hard, but things come to them very naturally. But most of us, certain things come easier than others. So if it's something that doesn't come to you uh, in a real easy way, what you want to do is, again, break it down, just really break it down and simplify it for yourself, right? And then just focus on the specifics of that, okay? So this is my tip. Break everything down. Get specific. Even with color. If you have to break that down in more specifics, do that as well. So if you do this, I promise you, you'll be surprised. It may only take a month, sometimes two months, sometimes only a couple weeks for certain lower level uh, skills you're trying to develop. 
And if you just focus on it, you put it in your toolbox, then you can move on to something else, you add it. Do a little bit more, add it. You need to build muscle memory, which is really crucial, right? Muscle memory, if you don't know what that means, is the repetitiveness of doing it with your hand. Also training your eye and your mind to think a certain way. It's always going to be awkward at first. All right. So that's it. Robert Revels, Digital Painting Tips. Uh, I'm out.